Yeah. Okay, our last question. We have the function y equals the opposite of 2x plus 24, which you know is linear, and let me throw that word at you, linear. Degree 1 is linear, so when I have a, a function that's linear, I know the graph is going to be a line. When I have a function whose degree is 2, that's quadratic, and I know that graph's going to be a parabola. Now, let's take this linear function and graph it in a standard window and see what happens. So come over with me to my calculator. I'm going to, of course, hit zoom 6 to get a standard window. You've only heard me say that already about 100 times on these videos. So I know you know how to get a standard window. Zoom 6 puts all the window settings back to standard. Now, I'm going to type in the function y equals, and if you look on your paper, the function is opposite of, so I use the bottom key, opposite of 2, you know where to find x, it's next to the alpha, plus 24. Okay, and when I hit graph, you watch now. You watch my screen carefully. When I hit graph, uh-oh, this is not good. See this little tiny part of a line in, the, in quadrant one is all I see. So this is a terrible graph, okay? No, this is not the winner. This is awful. Now, let me, let me tell you why you should have known that it was awful, and some of you may have already known this. This 24 is the y-intercept, which is where the graph is going to cross the y-axis. Well, how are we going to possibly see that when a standard window stops at 10? You know, our graph's crossing way up here at 24, but that's not in our window, so how could we possibly view that? So graphing this in a standard window was kind of stupid, but, you know, you're learning, and you know, you'll say, okay, now I've got to adjust my window. Now, what they've asked you to do is to readjust your window settings. Okay, now, let me explain to you how you're going to readjust this. I've already told you when you see these little brackets, <coughs> the brackets, what it means for you to do inside there. This first number is the small x value. This is the large one. This is the smallest y value. This is the largest y value. And this time, they even want us to adjust our scale. X scale is 3, and Y scale is 5. So what that means is, if the X scale is changed to 3, every time we see a tick mark on the X axis, it means 3. It doesn't mean 1 anymore. So when we count the tick marks, it would be 3, 6, 9, and so on. If the Y scale is 5, that means that every tick mark is 5. We've adjusted the scale. It's just like a scale on a map. So when you count it, it would be 5, 10, 15, 20. Now let's learn how to put in those new settings. Remember how you change settings. You go to the window button and push it. All right, our new settings. X, they told me to make our new X settings negative 15 to 15. So we're going to put in the opposite of 15 use our down arrow key and x max is going to be a positive 15 use our down arrow key again x scale however is now supposed to be 3 so we change x scale to 3 all right come down with me use your down arrow key y min they told us to leave it at negative 10 y max Let's move down to Y max. They want Y max this time to be 30. Now think about why that's intelligent. Y max is 30. Well, that means the largest Y value that's going to show up is going to be 30. And we need the largest Y value to at least be 24. So see, you don't want to pick something real close to 24, but you, you, you don't want it to be like 25. But 30 is reasonable. And one other thing, I have to change my Y scale to 5 because they're telling me to. And now when I hit graph with my new window, look how nice that is. Now the reason that line is considered nice is because, remember what nice means, 
I can see the y-intercept and I can see the x-intercept, okay? And remember when you're counting these tick marks, the x tick marks are threes and the y tick marks are fives, okay? All right. I'm going to go ahead and give you one last comment here that they don't talk about. Let me, let me answer this question. The new settings are perfect, right? They work very well for us, okay? That, so that would be the winner. Now, let me show you one other thing here. I'm going to go back to a standard window. Remember, Zoom 6 is a standard window. When I look at my graph in a standard window, it's terrible. Now, Part B was pretty complicated, right? They made you put in all these window settings. And, you know, I don't know at this point, because some of you are so new to graphing calculators, if you would have ever thought that up on your own. So let me show you a trick. If you have a graph that's not fitting on your graphing calculator and you want to see it, there is an option called Zoom Fit, and it makes a graph fit the window most times. The way you use it is you push, you push, doggies, you push Zoom, and you can't even see that option. That option is way down here. See it? It's option zero. It's called zoom fit and it wasn't even on your screen. That's why I'm telling you about it. So we are going to hit zoom zero and look what happens when I hit zoom zero. Even though we don't get a perfect graph, we get a graph that was a lot better than the one we got the first time. So when in doubt, if you can't make a graph fit on your own, try to remember zoom zero because that at least gets you in the ballpark of viewing the graph. But to be honest, in this problem, choice B with these settings was the winner. And we're finally done with section 1.1, part one.